I want to thank you very much for taking interest and uh, staying until uh, 4 o'clock on a Thursday evening. What I'm about to show you is a revolution that was once considered to be science fiction, but now it is a reality, and it's the first in the world. People who are born through a genetic condition with any one of over 360 plus genes are hit with a retinal disease called retinitis pigmentosa. They are born, they can see, but then as they approach their 20s or 30s, they lose their sight completely and they become blind. So I'm going to start with the end in mind. What do these people say that we have implanted our system in after they receive it? Scott Nixon's eyesight started to fade when he was just a baby and he was declared legally blind before he turned 21. I can't even tell you something like, you know, how many fingers am I holding up, let alone anyone else. He is one of four participants trialling a bionic eye which helps people with retinitis pigmentosa navigate the world. So these patients start with vision in early life but progressively lose vision. The cutting edge surgical technique involves placing an implant on the skull which attaches via a lead to electrodes within the back of the eye. The glasses have two cameras capturing footage that's sent to this unit which converts the video into an electrical impulse. That then passes back to the skull onto the device in the eye which stimulates existing tissue helping wearers see. Great grandmother Colleen Knowles is one of millions robbed of their sight due to a genetic condition of the retina. Sometimes that little bit, even though it's not your fault, there's still that bit of guilt that you know, they've picked up this genetic condition from me and I see that down the track um, being a relief for parents and that as well, to know that something can be done. We live on the foreshore, I can look out over the bay and, and know whether there's any boats out there on the bay, whereas without the advice on I don't even know there's a, technically I know there's water and sand but I wouldn't be able to tell you. Colleen still vividly remembers her switch on day. Probably the first seven or eight times, nine times maybe, they would say, can you see anything? No, 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 no. And then all of a sudden, oh, and my family were in another room watching it through CCTV. So it was exciting for them as well. It's history making that's gonna change the lives of vision impaired people. That's what it does to somebody who lost their vision and now they have a vision that they can function with. So what is this disease? In very simple terms, you are born with this inherited di disease, as I mentioned. You are born with one gene out of possibly 360 plus individual genes that will cause you to completely lose your sight because it destroys the cells in the back of the retina that in you and I and all of us it turns light into vision. So once you destroy that you have no sight any longer. Actually the instance of, of this disease is a lot more than what a lot of people think. In the Western world like the United States and Europe it's about one in 4,000 people born with this. In India and China, it is one in 750 people, or one to 1,000 people born, are affected by this disease. And there is absolutely no viable option that exists today in the world. Gene therapy will never do it because gene therapy will perhaps look at a gene, or two, or three, but they could be born with, as I mentioned, 360 plus genes. Stem cells will not, will not do it, uh, and it's very, very early on. So really, no viable alternative. Until you come to the bionic eye, which would provide the only alternative. How does the system work? Very quickly, after the video, it's an implant very similar to the cochlear implant for the profound uh, deaf, and it's implanted right under 
the skull and a lead or an electrode is placed in a very safe space behind the retina. So you can go in and out of that space fairly safely without damaging any cells or causing any problem to the patient. Then there are the externals. And what are the externals? A pair of glasses like mine, but they are very cool glasses. They're, they are basically embedded with video cameras, infrared detectors, etc., that captures the scene of whatever it is in real life that the, that the wearer is, is looking at. It sends it to a microprocessor that you saw the picture, it's no bigger than an iPhone. And it's charged just like any mobile phone. That is the super duper computer that signal processes everything that it looks at and also provides the power and sends it back to the stimulator that then stimulates the back of the retina in a certain pattern. Very high technology and very, you know, much an, a patented style that between that then and the brain, the vision of the people come back in a way that it allows them to do so many things that you and I take for granted. They can recognize their loved ones for the first time. They can find the empty chairs, recognize street signs and uh, traffic lights and uh, fold their washing and socialize with people. That is something that, of course, they have missed for so long. And, and the tragedy is they know what it is like to see because when they were born, they saw it very well. What makes this extremely unique is that it is basically the very first implant that would be in a safe space called the choroidal space. It's very safe surgery. It's simple, done by any retinal surgeon. Basically, it doesn't damage any uh, remaining healthy cells that the patient has. And if the hardware was to be basically upgraded, you can remove it quite easily and, and, and insert another set of hardwares. And it doesn't exclude those patients, for example, if gene, gene therapy was to be uh, uh, really advanced or stem cell therapy, it doesn't exclude them from that because it doesn't destroy or damage any remaining cells. We are getting ready to go into the pivotal trial. We have already done two clinical trials, first in men in 2012 and followed those patients for over two years. They're, by the way, still all alive today in 2023. And we did a feasibility study uh, with four patients in 2017, and we have followed them up. And it is very safe and very effective to the point that the FDA have granted us, at the end of 2021, a breakthrough indication. The last trial that stands in our way to go and obtain commercial approval in the United States, Europe, Australia, China, etc is the pivotal trial, which we are going to go into with a device that is much, much easier to upgrade, much thinner uh, externals and very thinner implants so that it's, very, it's minimal surgery. Out of the development, really, of the Bionic Eye, we came up with a non-implant product that uses everything that the Bionic Eye does except the implant. But it's not for retinitis pigmentosa. It's not for those people. It's for those who use white cane, for example, or guide dogs. So it's a consumable product that uses everything that the Bionic Eye system does use, the glasses, the externals, but just is no implant. But instead of the implant, it uses a belt that you wear. And on the, in the back of this belt, there are 100 vibrators. Those 100 vibrators basically allows those people who need vision aid to navigate, know how far are obstacles from them, where, are, where is the obstacle, and whether they're getting closer or further, etc. It actually does provide an excellent you know, navigation and safety for those vision aid. Also, nothing exists like it. There are, of course, readers, uh, but that's that not for these people. There are uh, the white cane, as I mentioned, but the white cane only senses the ground, 
uh, and white dogs, and uh, not white dogs, but uh, guide dogs rather, uh, basically their vision is the height of the dog. This, of course, captured the entire view. And it's, uh, we've done a clinical trial, and the results have been published, and it is excellent. This is a consumable product that we can very quickly release to the market within about 12 to 18 months. Uh, of course, nothing happens without a, a, a very competent and experienced team. I take myself out of that sentence, but my team are ex extremely experienced in the uh, research, development, and commercialization of implantable devices, and uh, uh, such as, for example, cochlear implants, as this technology kind of uh, similar to what cochlear does for the deaf. This uh, does it for the blind. Uh, we work, of course, with the who's who in our medical advisory board, the who's who in the retinal surgery wor world. And if you mention any of these names, um, uh, they will tell you they are the number one uh, leaders in retinal surgery in the United States, Europe, uh, and in Australia. Huge market, absolutely huge. The Vibrocyte, which is a consumable product, is about a $1.2 billion market just for the white cane users, but it extends to nearly a $14 billion market if you include uh, uh, people legally blind. Uh, now, the Bionic Eye, which is the implantable system for retinitis pigmentosa, we currently focus on the late stage, so that is the stage that is they have gone completely blind, and that is a fairly extensive market, 3.4 billion. And we will never stop there, of course, and we will start looking at early stages. Uh, we are forecasted to achieve significant re revenues, and that's actually quite conservative. So we will start by launching the Vibrocyte, or the consumable product, with early revenue in 2026 calendar year, and we expect in, on launching the Bionic Eye, and uh, we are looking into becoming over a $100 million company by calendar year 30. Uh, we are seeking 20 million. What is that going to do? We are going to basically get into the pivotal trial and uh, complete it, because it's the last trial we require before the FDA and the European, and basically the global uh, uh, commercial approval. And um, in summary, we have something that's really groundbreaking. We will be the first in market. We will drive this market. It will be a monopoly for some time until someone comes. Uh, there's no one right now anywhere near uh, uh, where we are. Uh, it's been clinically validated. We have many publications for those two clinical trials. We have a very clear strategy in place to gain commercial approval, and we have a very strong patent uh, portfolio. And as, you, uh, uh, as I have mentioned, the market opportunity is quite significant. And uh, again, nothing happens without experienced people behind it, and we believe we do have that. And I thank you very much for your attention.